but we in our minds it, it's like it doesn't really affect us because we're kind of desensitized but when you're actually there it's different because you can actually hear the screams like the the frequency of how they're screaming is a lot different on television versus when you're actually there it's a lot different when you actually smell the blood you smell the shit you smell death you know like you smell that shit um it, you know it's 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 a lot different when that shit's spraying on your face you know, and because now, now it's not just a visual receptive, it's, it's true audio, plus like, you know, sensory of smell, maybe even taste, maybe a shit flies in your mouth, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, some smell could be so wretched that it could taste it through your mouth, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and I've, I've heard people saying like, I mean, you would smell like that if you're working in a slaughterhouse, you'll smell like that for days. Welcome to another episode of the Plant Cured Podcast. I'm Callum, your dedicated plant-based nutritionist, and the voice you just heard belongs to none other than Corinne Sutton, a true embodiment of strength, determination, and vegan advocacy. In today's episode, we delve deep into Corinne's journey, uncovering the pivotal moments that shaped him into the influential vegan bodybuilder and activist that he is today. From his rigorous days in the military to his passion of activism, we explore the spark moment that propelled him towards embracing a plant-based diet and the remarkable transformation that followed. Corinne shares his insights on effective workouts, how to navigate the challenges posed by online trolls, and the power of community in spreading vegan message. In this episode, it's more than just conversation. It's an inspiring tale of transformation, resilience, and the relentless pursuit of one's conviction. It's a testament to what can be achieved when passion meets purpose, and I can't wait for you to hear it. Before we dive in, a small request. While our listener base continues to grow, it seems that the number of star ratings and reviews hasn't quite caught up. If you find value in what we're doing here, please consider leaving a review or a rating on your preferred platform. It's a small gesture that means a lot to me. It also helps new listeners to find the podcast, spread the message further, and enables us to continue bringing you the content and the guests that inspires, educates, and empowers us all. Thank you so much for your support, love, and being part of this journey with us. Remember, every small change contributes to a larger impact. Peace and plants. And now, without further ado, let's jump into this riveting episode. Corin, it's a pleasure to have you here. I'm very grateful for you. Um, we can observe your muscular physique and witness your you know, confident advocacy towards veganism and bodybuilding and particularly your straightforward approach to very much healthy eating in your showcasing your videos on TikTok and Instagram and it kind of prompts that curiosity about the journey that brought you to this point so if we strip away the external image um mm -hmm. what are the key aspects and experiences of your life uh, that we should know to truly understand who you are uh yeah so uh just a little bit about myself for me I am, um, my name is Corinne Sutton. I deployed to Operation Iraqi Freedom 3 and 4. I was in the military for about eight years overall. Uh, did four years in the United States Marine Corps, fully active service. And then after that, got out and did another four years in the United States Navy. And then um, once I finished doing that, that's when pretty much, to make a long story short, I transitioned to a plant-based diet and started becoming a personal trainer. But I was a personal trainer before I, I went vegan. So um, started training and then I got into uh, veganism. And then from there, that's when I started really pursuing into exercise science. I have a degree in exercise science, uh, got my certification in sport nutrition. And also I'm a master fitness trainer as well. So um, I'm qualified in multiple fields of exercise. Uh, so and then I got into uh, bodybuilding as well and that was mostly just for you know mostly for me but also to showcase and show people that you know you could definitely build muscle on a plant-based lifestyle and also show like the benefits of doing it correctly especially if you do it healthy mm, absolutely and so obviously you were in the military um and mm -hmm. were you were you plant-based in the military or was that something that happened afterwards uh, when I was in the, when in the Navy reserves, I, that I kind of transitioned then because I was going to school at the same time. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was, when I actually transitioned was when I saw the speech by Gary Roski 
Uh, he's like a vegan activist and he actually came into my classroom and did a speak about, um, you know, going vegan and you can watch the same speech on YouTube. It's called the best speech ever. And, uh, it's really good. I highly recommend vegans and non-vegans to watch it. Uh, he does hit a lot of, a lot of points when it comes to ethics, medical reasons, uh, health reasons. Like he, he just hits so many, so many different pain points. And, um, when I watched, when, when he came to my classroom and, and I listened to his speech, his speech, um, he definitely convinced me because we were learning about persuasive speaking and um, just the, how he articulated the message to me. Um, it was just straightforward, straight, straight to the points. He wasn't sugarcoating everything. And I'm not, I'm a, I'm a very open-minded guy. So when he talked about certain points, when it came to veganism, I never heard this before. So uh, that's what made me explore that that realm you know i want to explore it and, and see if it's really true um you know is there a real benefits behind it uh do animals really do suffer do they really go through pain and suffering um when it comes down to uh the slaughtering of animals because i've witnessed a lot of things just for humans you know i went to war so i saw the worst i saw people at the at the worst of their core you know what i'm saying uh and i was in a combat unit so um, when I saw that, like I, I was diff definitely interested to learn a little bit more what really happens in the animal agriculture when it comes to farming and stuff like that. Absolutely. I think as well, as you just said, obviously you obviously were in a combat unit. So I'm guessing that's very, um, from what I can imagine anyway, um, a very obviously violent role. Um, mm -hmm. What you see a lot of violence. So obviously I think does that make you more receptive to obviously uh, violence towards animals? Because obviously you're seeing that on a human scale and then yeah. you know, animals that obviously are as sentient as us, they're obviously able to feel things as well. So does it make it more receptive, I guess? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Because, you know, I've, I, I've done some advocacy myself and, you know, so many people that I do relate to the most is... Um, you know, butchers, you know, like I've seen, I've seen hunters, I've seen butchers who talk to me and they like during like an advocacy event and they would be like, you know, I, I want to go vegan because especially a butcher or someone who worked in a slaughterhouse because they, it's like, they, they're seeing, they're literally seeing what's going on. And, and it's different when you're actually there because when you're, it's, it's one thing watching it on a television screen or watching it through your phone because it's just an image, you know, and what people don't realize is that there, a lot of people are already desensitized to watching TV. I mean, we see stuff, a scary movie, people getting disassembled in a scary movie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, or video games or something like that. Like, but we, in our minds, it, it's like, it doesn't really affect us because we're kind of desensitized. But when you're actually there, it's different because you can actually hear the screams, like the, the frequency of how they're screaming is a lot different on television versus when you're actually there. It's a lot different when you actually smell the blood, you smell the shit, you smell death, you know, like you smell that shit. Um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot different when that shit's spraying on your face, mm. you know, and it, because now, now it's not just a visual receptive is it's true audio plus like, you know, sensory of smell, Maybe even taste. Maybe a shit flies in your mouth. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, some smell could be so wretched that it could taste it through your mouth. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I've, I've heard people saying, like, I mean, you would smell like that if you're working in a slaughterhouse. You'll smell like that for days. You know, even after you take a shower, you still smell like that. Um, so when I when I hear stories from, from slaughter, uh, slaughterhouse workers or butchers and stuff like that, like, it, it's completely different when it comes down to just the normal Joe who works the nine to five job, like scrolling on Instagram, just talking, you know, like they're just talking shit and they, they're just desensitized to, to it all. You know, that's the thing. I think like, I see a lot of, um, obviously a lot of where I am, there's a lot of obviously activism going on with the TV screens and that, but obviously, as you just said, when you sing on the TV, we are desensitized to it because we've got mm -hmm. so many other things going around. So like, let's say we go see a horror movie and we see something where it is, someone's being chopped up and de decapitated. It's very much the same as when you watch that on a, a little screen, you know, like an animal. It's very, yeah. 
you kind of you're away with the fairies you don't really kind of see what's going on and it's just yeah i, I completely understand where you're coming from with that mm -hmm. Absolutely. But, um i think so when you when you saw that speech um in your classroom which I, i've actually seen the speech online um which was okay. great um mm -hmm. when, when, once you've seen that and like um would you would you say that you were one of the probably the only people that kind of went along with this then going plant based afterwards or was there or was it just you or is there a, a majority or a few people truthfully I, I don't know i don't know who I, I really didn't talk to anyone when i saw it i don't, I don't um, remember it. I, I don't even remember it. anyone in the class you know what i'm saying like i because for for me it was it was about me you know it's something that like it didn't matter about like I'm a type of guy like I don't care what other people do, you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I really didn't discuss it to, with anyone. Uh, I just remember that I went towards it and I kept on going. You know, I just pursued it. So uh, the first thing I did was, you know, I went pescatarian. I like took out all the animal byproducts. I ate whatever that was left over. Uh, went pescatarian for a little bit and while I was transitioning, then um, once I realized that, hey, you know, I don't need like fish, I could find like, you know, ample amount of protein on, on a plant based diet, then I finally switched over to plant based. And and then I was doing that till like for 11 years, almost about to go on 12 years pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's how it went with me. But I don't remember really even discussing it with anybody it, maybe like a classmate here like oh you know we thought you know like just shooting the shit but I don't, I don't have any names i don't i don't i can't even say like if some people wanted to go vegan or not you know because you know some people might say oh i'm going to do it but who knows you know what i'm saying it's so mm -hmm. long ago too so i wouldn't remember you know i think as well like i think that the obviously you went pescatarian first as well is i think that's everybody's journey because that was me as well i went on a pescatarian then yeah. to vegetarian um obviously at this point i was still consuming dairy and eggs and then i became very lactose intolerant so that kind of blew that out for me um and then mm -hmm. transitioned to a, a a fully whole foods plant-based diet probably yeah, I'd say five or six years ago now um at most and it's it's been one of the best um the last choices that I've made as well um but when when you first went did you find any kind of like health benefits I'm, gu I'm guessing you obviously must have been a very um active person in the first place um I I, I make I, like I well from what I imagine anyway um would be you're very active uh very muscular in the first place and then obviously you've just kind of carried that on throughout yeah, I mean, I, I was already pretty active. I was already working out like five days out of the week, uh, bodybuilding train. But like, even even with what I knew, I mean, I, w I was still like a, a young trainer. I was I was a rookie, you know, so I didn't know everything. But uh, my weight was at two twenty five, so I I was still holding some body fat, like um, like for my age, because I think I was like somewhere between. 18% body fat. So I was kind of, I mean, it's not like horrible, but it's on a body fat chart. It, it is considered overweight, but just by a little bit. So I was like a little overweight and, um, because I didn't know anything about nutrition, you know, I was just doing bro science stuff. And, and what some people don't realize is that during this time, I mean, this is when there was no social media wasn't even at its prime. It was at its infant stage. And, uh, you know, people weren't really using it just like, maybe you throw a picture up or you partying something like no one wasn't really doing anything with it. Um, but with me, like for me, like I, I was just doing bro science, like reading men's health magazines and doing what it says, like, Hey, you know, eat chicken, eat fish, you know? So I was doing a lot of tilapia, a lot of salmon, a lot, a lot of chicken breasts, you know, I was eating like eggs, um, milk and cheese and stuff like that, you know, and, uh, and vegetables, like just, you know, the, the normal diet, any healthy guy who's trying to build muscle and, and get ripped would be doing, you know? And, um, but I was holding like 18% by fat. I was doing tons of cardio. Um, but then once, once I transitioned, um, yeah, there was tons of benefits, like without me even trying. And obviously me knowing nutrition now, I mean, obviously I put myself in a, a caloric deficit automatically by just removing, 
uh, eggs, removing cheese, dairy, like things that's like a little bit more calorically dense, so especially like dairy and cheese. Like they're pretty calorically dense, just removing that, um, removing some of those proteins like the chicken and uh, the chicken and uh, maybe like once a week I would have like red meats, you know, I would take that out. And I was just eating more rice, more beans, a lot more vegetables because um, there was no real processed meats back then either. You know, like I remember going to Whole Foods and the only thing I saw back then was it was either tofu, you know, or uh, they had they had like the tempeh. And I remember seeing I, I don't remember seeing seitan, but I remember seeing like tofurkey. But that shit was expensive, like the little deli meats. And it was like seven dollars a box, and I, I wasn't I wasn't even buying that. I was like, "Yo, that's way too expensive," you know. I was like, "I was in college. I was like, that's way for that small little box, seven bucks. Like, that's crazy, you know." So I was just doing like, and and truthfully, I I didn't even mess with the tofu because I didn't even know what it was, you know what I mean. So I was just doing mostly just whole foods plant based, like everything rice and beans, very conventional. Like I was buying vegetables from the can. I was in high school, I mean, sorry, I was in college. So I was just like buying the cheapest things and, um, automatically just, uh, just from doing that, I, I went from like 225, I believe all the way down to like 165, 175. So I dropped tremendous amount of weight. But the thing was, is that I was ripped. You know, I had a six pack. I, my energy was still good and, uh, I felt good. My skin was clearer. You know, my, I had better mental clarity. I, I just, I was sleeping better, uh, more energized, more stamina. So like, I just felt good. And people would ask me like, oh, how do you, you're getting small, you know, like friends, all be, oh, you're getting small, man. I'm like, it could be the case, but you know, I, I didn't care about the size. I was like, I, I was looking at aesthetics. I was like, I might be getting small, but I got six pack. Yeah. And I was like, and this is way, and in my mind, and, I, and back then I was like partying more and stuff. So I was like, girls don't care about how big you are, bro. Like, they, like <laughs> I was like, I was like, as long as you got, as long as you're ripped, man, that's all that matters, man. So like, that's how I put it. I was like, y'all could say I could be a little bit smaller, whatever, man. Just buy tighter shirts. <laughs> that's, that's problem solved. And I was like, and I live in South South Florida, so I'm like. We don't even wear shirts half of the time anyway. So like we're at the beach all the time, you know what I mean? So like for me, it wasn't even a problem. And, um, and, but then once, once I went like fully plant-based and I found out more about like protein sources, like tofu and, and finding out like really good recipes, because I was eating like, you know, I was just throwing shit in a bowl, man. Just eat like rice, broccoli, like tofu. Like it wasn't any real meals. I was just like throwing it in. And I didn't care. Uh, but once I started learning about like how to cook, cook with the vegetables and make different foods, like, like, uh, like vegan lasagna and stuff like that, you know, I started really learning how to cook. Uh, that's when, that's when, um, I start, I pretty much started doing bodybuilding and then more, more products kind of started coming out. Like Tofurky started doing like the Tofurky sausages and I was like, Oh, okay. Like this is a little bit more affordable. I could buy that. You know? Um, and then going through bodybuilding and also like by that time I was getting my certification. So the second thing I got, once I got my uh, certified personal trainer was the nutrition and then also hiring a coach at the same time, because I was doing a lot of things at once, like school, getting my certifications and doing bodybuilding. So there, it was just like, I was flooding myself with tons of information on plant-based nutrition, on on regular nutrition by itself, so I can get ripped, you know, really put the adequate amount of nutrients I really need, so I can like really put more muscle back on, and um, and that's what happened. I just started putting on some muscle, um, you know, just kept on going from there, you know, pretty much. Yeah, I was about to say, like, obviously going back eleven years, there there can't be many options for you back then. Um, I, I would say it's only really yeah. in the last what five years I would say there's been a influx of literally every possible kind of replica you can think of. So it's very just a very whole food yeah. plant based diet. Um, and mm -hmm. I yeah, so it was I, I like I think when I first when I first switched over myself, I went to a very much whole foods plant based uh, diet as well. 
Um, and then was very much educating myself to obviously not not so much bodybuilding or um, but more running to kind of fuel that. And it was very much, you know, those, those sources of carbs, those proteins and fats that are actually going to fuel your body. Um, and I found those yeah. worked wonders for me as well, um, especially when obviously competing against other people, which was which was incredible. Um, but mm -hmm. when when it comes to obviously bodybuilding, obviously the conventional bodybuilder diet is probably one of the unhealthiest. However, yours is very different because obviously normally it's you know chicken, rice, broccoli, um, and a few other bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. um, however, your diet is very much you know very green very colorful nourishing and giving you more nutrients than i think obviously the um the, the rice chicken and broccoli could probably ever give you because that is very much that staple meal yeah absolutely mean uh but to be honest in the beginning when i first started like it, it was very bodybuilder like i was very focused on macros when i first went vegan first started doing bodybuilding because a lot of this was like just maturity of uh, the longer I did it, the more I kept studying. Um, I started learning more about the importance of nutrients, the importance of fiber intake, uh, all that stuff, you know, like different foods have different types of nutrients, like superfoods and, you know, and, and, and the importance of being on a high fiber diet, like a, a lot of things I learned, you know, throughout time, because um, I even had my processed food. I remember one year, I was counting macros. I was doing everything process, you know, because all this guardian was just popping out with everything like vegan fish. I was like, man, I haven't had fish like forever. Oh, I want to try that. Oh, vegan pork, vegan burgers, like all this stuff. I, I had that time until I started learning like, man, even when you count macros, like I don't feel good. Like I, I was getting the same results. Uh, but to go back when I first started, like it was very bodybuilder. Like I was doing like tons of oatmeal. Um, I was doing like big bags of mixed vegetables and then just like tofurkey sausages. It was just very like bland, very strict, you know, very rugged stuff. Like same shit every day. Uh, no creativity, no f true flavor. Um, I mean, I was getting some nutrients in, but it was just like very like if you saw my diet, it was trash, you know, like just tofurkey sausage with mixed vegetables and that's it or just like three bowls of oatmeal, that's it. Like, <laughs> and maybe an apple, you know, <clears throat> it was, it was pretty bad. And then it evolved into that doing like Chipotle, Taco Bell, anything that really hit macros, you know, not so focused on micronutrients and fiber intake. But the longer I, the more, the more I started educating myself in plant-based nutrition, and learning about vitamins and minerals. And this is where a lot of people mess up, you know, because it's sometimes for, I can only imagine the regular new vegan, especially these days, they're all, they're in that freezer section, just like getting every single alternative out there, but they're not really focused on the micronutrients and the fiber, because what usually happens is that they're taking the same knowledge that they already have on a plant, on an animal-based diet, and they're just trying to apply that same that same lifestyle, those same lifestyle habits, which is bad lifestyle habits, or what I say, the sad diet, right? The standard American diet, taking that same tactic that they already learned on a plant-based diet, and they think it's going to be the same. And it's like, no, like you didn't know how to eat properly on an animal-based diet, which intrigued you to go plant-based, and but you 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 don't just swap things out and expect the same results. Like you have to really understand how to hyper nourish your body. You know, like you have to understand like what fruits and vegetables you have to be consuming when it comes to that like that food combination, so you can really get the the proper amounts of nutrients you really need. Um, and that's I learned that throughout time because I was reading tons of books because obviously school just shows you the scientific method, like calories in, calories out, like ratio of macros, you know, that's it. But I had to read, I had to do a lot of my own studying when it came to plant-based nutrition, like learning underneath like Dr. Brooke Goldner, Dr. Michael Greger, um, well, who else? Like, um, you know, I got new books here, like from, uh, Will, 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 uh, Bullswick, Bullswick from Fiber Fuel, you know, like 
I had to learn a lot of stuff on my own just to really understand like, Hey, you know, you, you, you can do bodybuilding, but like, you have to really understand like vitamins, minerals, like hyper nourishment, fiber. And like now, like now, like I eat super clean, like it's really clean. Um, I'm not eating tons of processed food and trashy foods. Like I, I have my cookies here and there. I have a piece of stuff for like, like Chipotle, Taco Bell, like you barely, maybe once a year, you'll see me there. Uh, but it's not like how it was, how it was before, you know, majority of my diet is really clean, organic. I have, you know, I'm in a better place now. I'm not, you know, in college, I was broke. Now I have more money. So I'm more financially stable. So I can afford like higher quality foods. I can get organic versus a uh, convention mm, absolutely you know what I, mean? I do understand what you mean with obviously new vegan switching over because like it's great that these things are there to obviously help you know people transition over and make it slightly easier but obviously there, there's an addiction process to it as well so the new like for, for instance ben and jerry's it's there it's great uh, everybody loves it however when it yeah. becomes a staple, it's no better than the diet they were on beforehand it, you know, they're just kind of stuck in that same routine mm -hmm. it's when you look into your more kind of the the better options for instead of like a fake mince instead of uh, choose lentils instead something along the lines of that that way you're really getting those like the macros and the micros there that you need whereas the impossible meats things like that they're all great they they are nice um, however eating those on a regular basis is kind of it's it's not helpful yeah absolutely but when it comes to um, bodybuilding there there is more and more plant based bodybuilders popping up now um more more than ever before but it's it's obviously still a very slow process so what is it that you think is like the big i think it's the big misconception that it doesn't it's not manly to be eating plants and obviously you know try building uh, bodybuilding i feel like it's very conflicting lifestyle for some for some people because it's what they've already known um i truthfully i don't think i i don't like I don't think it's it's the the sport. Like people in bodybuilding don't criticize other bodybuilders. It's 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 the audience that criticizes the bodybuilders. It's mm -hmm. really just people online. It's not even the audience. It's people online that never bodybuild before. They're they're like, you know, they praise. They have like fans, like fans who never been to a bodybuilding show. They just they they have this like I don't, I don't know I don't even know what to call it. Like I guess an idol. Like they idolize these people online but they never like really go to shows like you know what i'm saying like they idolize the person but as an influencer or online person but they never actually go to the shows to watch like how the sport actually goes like that's what i've noticed mm -hmm. is that um because when you talk when it's other athletes like athletes who consume me i never ever had a athlete another athlete come to me and criticize me about my diet. They're usually intrigued, you know, because as an athlete, we both know, like it takes a lot of work to do what we need to do. So they're actually impressed and they're like, damn, like, are you serious? You're able to do all of that. You know, even, even when it comes to like, like illegal drug use and stuff like that, like I never had an athlete accuse me being on steroids, like, because they know, like they, they like, they see me, you know, and they're, they know, you know, like we know who's on it and who don't, but even, even if we know, we don't like be calling each other out and stuff like that. Like if it's, if you're in an untested sport, you're in an untested sport. Like it is what it is. It's like, you know, you're like, everyone knows it's a choice up to at the end of the day, you know, but no one's criticizing each other. You know, like I might, people might get pissed at scoring or something, but they're, they're not criticizing, you know, like, man, I should have beat that guy. Screw that, man. Yeah. But not like criticizing the individual. I met like all the bodybuilders I've met, all the bodybuilding shows I've done. I've done over 28 different shows. I'm one in all of them. You know, like I have tons of trophies back there. You know what I mean? Like never had an athlete criticize me about my diet. They, they're usually asking questions. More out of curiosity, I guess. You know, they're usually at curiosity. Yeah, they're they're curious. They're asking questions. Uh, some of them all. Some of them wanted help, like maybe to reduce animal intake because 
they're consuming more meat and, and they'll be honest. They'll be like, I'll feel good eating all this stuff. Yeah. Like I, I do the whey proteins, like my stomach's all messed up. What what's a what do you take? Oh, I take this plant based. Is that is it safe if I take that? Look at me, bro. Like, yeah, man, you be okay, bro. Like protein, protein. Oh, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Yeah. You know? And they'll try it and they'd be like, Oh man, I can't yo, I like the protein powder, man. It's good. Yeah. You know? So like it's it's all about like, you know, sharing ideas, sharing, you know, we share ideas, people are curious, but there's no there's no criticizing. Like I never, never had that. Like, um, it's just people online who's, you know, who idolize other bodybuilders and, or idolize like these influencers who promote me. They're the ones that come on other people's pages. That's why I see the most hate is really mm -hmm. online, but in, in real life and online is fake life. Yeah. You know, I think it's fake. It's fake. Okay. Everyone pretends that there's something that they're not, and they do things that they know they would never do in person, you know? So, um, but in real life, I, even in real life, I have people come up to me and they're nice and they're curious, you know? So that's how I look at it. I think that's the, that's the thing. Like, I think with other athletes as well, or people looking to do that, they are, it is more curiosity. Whereas, as you said, there is a, there is a lot of trolling online. And I've gone through the comment section of some, yeah. some of, like, I've been through, I've had a look through your comment section uh, the other day. Um, and also people... People like, oh yeah, I was getting murdered. Like there was, there, there was people telling you to take steroids, and then there's also telling people that you're on, on steroids. So there's no, there's no winning there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I, 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 yeah, I think it was a, a post. I think about six posts, and like there, there was one that was like, oh, you should take steroids to get bigger, and then. <laughs> And I, yeah, I, I feel like what, whatever yeah. way you go, even if you were on it, somebody would accuse you of it. Or even if you weren't on it, um, people would be like telling you to do it. So there's no there's no win win for you. It's kind of it's just very much, you know, a, a lot of people because 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 a lot of people don't you know they like I said they don't go to shows like they're they're watching it from a screen. So it's like. If you're not getting out of your house, you're not actually going to these shows. You're not actually like doing the true research and and doing the background. Like you know, like I, I've been in bodybuilding for a long time, so I've been to multiple shows. I even judge shows. You know, I did. I've I've judged a lot and been also into a lot of tested shows. You know, and I also competed in a lot of untested. And, he, he, and it's a ninety day difference. Like you can mm. totally tell. You know, but especially in the sport of bodybuilding, you know. You could definitely tell, but, but I know a lot of these people don't, don't go to these shows. And when they're looking at it from a screen, you, you just have to think about it from their perspective. It's like, if, if you've never been to a show and you know, you're comparing and then you're, and then you have to remember some of the stuff that they're watching because how social media works is like, it's going to keep feeding you the thing. It's going to feed you the shit that you like. Right. So if you like watching people that that knocks on vegans all the time and says that vegans can't never build muscle, and you get like it's going, the algorithm is going to keep feeding that information. So it's like it's programming, you know. They're just going to keep flooding the information, and then what what social media like to do is like throw a wild card at you. So they'll throw like a post like me, right? Like here's a vegan. <laughs> you know, and then, and then you're you're like, and then imagine this guy who's getting flooded with that information. They're like, that's impossible, you know, because they just seen like ten guys who's just telling them a bunch of shit about vegans. Like they they're weak, they're mad, and they're showing, and even if they're showing pictures. They're showing like the worst <laughs> people in the <laughs> the worst people <laughs> as examples, right? And and then um, and that's what happens, but people. Like people don't know all the metrics and stuff like that. They don't understand like how this stuff really works. They're just consumers. Yeah, you know, it's a free app. You just put everyone has it on their phone these days. They just watch and and they're just consumers. They're not trying to figure out how all that stuff. They're just getting fed the shit that they believe. Yeah. You know? And that's how it's programmed. And unfortunately, it's sad, but <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah, I, I would yeah. say like eat back back uh 
back a while ago. I, w- I was exactly the same, I think. Because um, although I wasn't commenting on people, I had this misconception of what I thought vegans looked like. And then um, I can't remember the magazine it was where um, Nimai Delgado was on the front of it. And I saw that for the first time. I was like, well, that can't be true. That guy must be on steroids. And then um, obviously... Mm-hmm. over time learning you realize that it is a possible thing and poss- we, we we can create muscle you can have a physique like that on a plant-based diet yeah. obviously with the misconceptions that i had at that time i was like that can't be real and over time it's obviously the, the more knowledge you get the more information you get you you slowly you, you do change your mind because obviously knowledge is power mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely so are you still like tracking your macros now even even though like you're obviously you obviously doing this on a day-to-day basis are you still tracking your protein are you still tracking your like your, your macros and uh, your micros yeah yeah i track it I, i've been tracking macros for like 11 years since i started like bodybuilding pretty much like i've been tracking forever like for me it's not a problem you know so i enjoy tracking uh, some some people don't like it, but I like it because it, it keeps myself accountable and I'm just very analytical. Like I run a business, so I'm very I track a lot of things like tracking what I eat is is probably like the smallest de- denominator mm-hmm. of what I track. You know what I'm saying? So so like so for me, it's not really an issue for my when it comes to my lifestyle. You know what I mean? So um, but I enjoy it because it. Because if I want to maintain the physique that I have, if I want to stay healthy, if um, I want to optimize my health, I don't want any type of, um, you know, surprises. Like, I, I'm very, I'm that type of guy, like, if something's going on, like, let's figure out and see what we can do to solve this, you know. And because I'm tracking, it's not like I'm trying to figure out, like, well, what, what am I doing? No, I have the information right here. Let's see what we can clean up. Maybe it's something I need to clean up. Maybe it's something I need to do or readjust. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a, a person that likes to react very fast, you know, and I, I don't wait. I waste time and just thinking about figuring, like, oh, what, oh, poor me, you know. But, um, but track, like I said, tracking for me is like the smallest nom- denominator in my in my life. So it's it's nothing, you know. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I. I do fall in and out of tracking. Like I will track for months and months on end. And then I kind of have like one off day where I won't. And it kind of disrupts a whole entire kind of like month. And then I have to get back on it. And it's very hit and miss with tracking. Um, so how much protein mm-hmm. are you having per day now to kind of keep the physique you're, you're in? And obviously you're, you're still competing as well, aren't you? Oh, well, I'm on an off season. So right now I'm just bulking, you know, just trying to get more calories in and, and put on a little bit more muscle but uh right now i'm doing around like 185 185 grams of protein per day There's and that's that. coming from like you know your satan tofu and then obviously everything else about about half of it will come from mostly from the satan and um maybe like a soy free tofu or a regular tofu and either a protein shake or like I do like right now I'm doing like the kite hill Greek yogurt. So uh, that's, that's like my main rotations. And, and those are the things that I'll switch out. It'd be like seitan, regular tofu or soy free tofu or protein shake or a, um, you know, a yogurt, you know, uh, but, and, but everything else, the remaining amount would come from whole foods like sweet potatoes, black beans, rice, peanut butter, um, Brussels sprouts, kale, onions, bell peppers, mushrooms. Um, I think I already said spinach, right? So like a lot of that is coming from the, the whole foods because they do have protein in it as well, you know? Yeah, I think there's the, pe- people will underestimate the amount of protein that these kind of whole foods do have because it, for instance, you don't think of rice as being a pro, like having a protein source inside it. Although obviously a carb source, it does also have varying amounts of protein as well as like black beans and things like that. People just see them as these, you know, just side dishes as such and forget that there's, that there's protein sources yeah. within. That, yeah, because again, it goes back to what I said, it's, it's that sad diet mentality. Like um, everything's very black and white. Uh, people, even when I grew up, I grew up with the 
with the pyramid and the my plate. So it's like, you know, you didn't see the protein section with beans and rice and vegetables. Protein was meat, fish, poultry. You know, that's it. Um, and then you then they separate they categorize everything as different food groups like fruits, vegetables, you know, uh, nuts, sugar and snacks, you know, like they, they segregated everything. Um, but people don't understand that like, yeah, you can get protein on a plant based diet. Uh, you just need to know first you need to know what your protein goals are and what your what your fitness and aesthetic goals are because that that plays a significant role not everyone needs to be consuming like a high amounts of protein um you know you have like joe smoes out there who's not even going to try to do a bodybuilding show trying to eat one gram of protein per body weight like i don't think it's really necessary if you're not really doing it competitively um if you're just trying to just have a nice physique and your work ethic isn't as a, as competitive or or as rigid as a as a professional bodybuilder, uh, you don't need to do that. But you know, a lot of people think that they are training at that level. I even thought, and and, and the reason I'm saying it is not just so I'm not trying to make fun of people. I used to think the same because I used to read the damn magazine. You know, now everyone's following other influ influencers and. They're following their favorite bodybuilders and they're like, I want to be like them, but they're not really, you know, you know, they're not investing into coaches and stuff like that. They're just following free advice. What they, you know, it's like, I was there. I used to be there. Uh, and then when she's really invest in coaching, you really start doing the sport. You're like, I see why you need one gram of protein per body weight or a little bit more, <laughs> you know, because these, you know, we're training hard. You know, some of these guys train like three hours in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Like their training regimen is is ridiculous. Yeah. You know? Um, and especially if you if you're on the sauce, of course you need a lot more. Your body's like on a on a turbo engine. So of course you need a lot more. That's, that's why some of these guys like they they might be like 250 pounds or 220 pounds, but they're consuming up to 300 grams of protein. You know, they're on the sauce. Of course, that's why they're doing that. You know, their body is able to break all that stuff down. No sweat. And actually utilize it, you know what I mean. But um, but again, there's just it's a lot of people aren't informed of what what really goes on, and everyone thinks that they're doing their best. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like like it's just <laughs> it's just how it is. Uh, but once you once you get a professional, that's when a professional would definitely tell you the truth and the reality. Like, hey man, you don't need to be doing this much for what you're trying to do. You know, Let, let's bring let's. You know, I know your dreams are here, but let's bring you down to reality. Like you're a dad with four kids and you work at a, a cubicle and you only have enough time to work out for an hour. So I don't think you need that much <laughs> protein, you know, like, like, like we could get you to be right and be fit, you know, like you can look good for yourself, but like, here's the reality, you know what I'm saying? Like we have to bring you back from the stars and put you back into reality man, and, and just be real. And that's when, uh, because I, I do it with my students as well. Like, um, I'll be telling them, like, you don't really need that much protein for what you're trying to achieve, you know? And, and they get great results, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's that's all it is. And, and like I said, I used to be there. So, uh, you know, because I know some people be like, oh, that's bullshit, bro. And I'm like, I used to be there, man. I used to do it. I used to pound those chicken breasts, pound the ribs, pound the steak. Yeah, I wasn't even counting back then. I was just like, protein. <laughs> hey, Ronnie Coleman, bro. Hey, yeah, you know, <laughs> like yeah, it's been it has it has been pushed more and more. I think protein, but it's like when when did we actually work out how much people actually need on just just if you're a, like on a sedentary, you know, sitting down working and not having you don't need that much. But it's been pushed so much that it's like constant 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 that we need it in every meal where you need a huge portion of every meal whereas obviously our body's making it up during the day if you it's okay to skip out on a tiny bit on like a, on a breakfast if you got it in your lunch and dinner and you're not or you don't have like a giant athletic goal mm -hmm. absolutely and, and even what sport you do really determines on how much protein you need like if you're like doing like a lot of Guys who are doing like endurance sports, like long, long endurance sports, they don't need a lot of protein either. They they need more, like probably more carbohydrates, you know, just because they need more effective energy because more of an mm -hmm. active sport. 
and they're not really trying to put on, they're not trying to look like no bodybuilder. You know what I'm saying? They might just want to look nice, lean, fit, you know, have a nice, nice aesthetic look, but they're not trying to, you know, look like any bodybuilder. So, so they don't, really, someone like that, and especially with their, with their training regimen, you know, their training regimen is different. They're, they're doing more cardiovascular stuff versus actually lifting weights. Uh, so, you know, that, that will also determine mm. as well. So obviously with, with your, your, you're very active, you're very healthy. What are your kind of non-negotiables when it comes to like your every day? Um, like when it comes to just, like working, just working out, out or like just having the most like wellness to your body. Like, you know, like a lot of people like have the pillars of like, you know, sleep, nutrition. Um, yeah, th those. Yeah. So, so for me, it's like, you know, definitely working out is definitely a non, non negotiable. Like I always have to work out. It doesn't matter if I'm traveling or what's going on in my life. I usually find some time to work out. And even if I'm, like really busy I'll, I'll do something you know like um i'll do something to just stay active maybe even if it's just a light workout or maybe it's just cardio that day um I, I i'll figure out something i usually don't just like take a whole week off for no apparent reason you know like oh i'm traveling i'm going on vacation i want to take a whole week off uh just because when it comes to working out I look at it as a lifestyle. It's it's a lifestyle. Like I I enjoy feeling strong. I enjoy feeling fit. Um, it actually makes me feel more calmer throughout the day. I, I just feel good. Well, when I do work out, um, every food is consistently coming in and coming out. If when I'm working out, we kind of notice like if I do a week without working out, things start to slow down a little bit. You know, uh, so that's what and even i noticed with me drinking water like if i don't work out for like after like two three days straight like my water consumption starts to reduce because obviously i'm not i'm not excreting out of that water i'm not using the water you know and i like i like drinking a lot of water especially the foods that i eat um so that's one uh number two is definitely uh getting proper rest and sleep you know that's definitely important because just as much as you work out you have to really take care of resting and, and uh, hydrating your body for recovery because that's the only way your body's going to build. Um, and that's why I use like an aura ring. I track my sleep, so I track a lot of stuff. <laughs> I track my sleep, you know what I mean? Um, so I really try to focus on that. Um, and then with foods is really making sure I hyper-nourish my body. So um, when I talk about hyper-nourishment, I usually each day I, I want to make sure I'm getting – all my vitamins and minerals and my fiber intake is high. So even if it's a day where I'm eating crap, like, you know, I want, I want to have a piece of whatever, or whatever junk food I want to eat out, just have, you know, fun, junky food. I know that if I had healthy foods in the morning, I will feel a lot better the next day. If I had some junky food uh, later that day, and waking up the next day, I feel better versus like if I had none at all. Yeah, I notice a, a significant difference. How I stool, how I sleep, how the energy is is uh, being utilized in my body. Because once you start getting, re once you start dialing in into your health, your body does start getting more sensitive to to things. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I don't like you barely see me with like alcohol in my hand or something like that. Like I, it's really rare if I drink, you know, I can literally count on my hands the times I drank each year. It's like, you know, one, one year, zero, another year, five on another year, you know? Um, but, and when I say five, like five drinks, you know, like in the whole entire year, like it's really rare because again, the, the when you understand health, when you understand nutrition, like, nothing else really matters, you know, like socializing, stuff like that, because it's your life and you only have one and you can have fun without it. You know what I mean? Like that's, I learned that a long time ago. I'm like, yeah, because I used to, I used to be an avid drinker, especially when I was younger. But I realized that, you know, only thing I was doing is kind of masking insecurities, you know what I'm saying? That I had internally. So, um, 
But once you start really getting to health and you have more self-confidence in yourself, you realize that you don't need you don't need these devices um, to have fun, to have a conversation, to hang out with people. You know what I mean? So um, I guess I guess that would be some like non-negotiables. Yeah. You know? Um, I did the other day put out a post for some people to ask you questions. Um, and one, I, I got okay. two two big ones here that came up quite a lot. So this one is where is it going? Here it is. That that your chest is popping. Probably the best chest I've seen. Um, <laughs> how do you get a chest like that? <laughs> Well, well, I mean, my my chest is is like one of my best assets, and and the re uh, and there's a reason behind it. The reason behind it is because when I was a teenager, I had a bird chest, you know. So it it was one of those things where I was pretty insecure when I started training, um, because I started training. I started going to the gym when I was 13, and I remember I would lay down because I had I had a big frame. I had a big chest. You know, like big rib cage, big chest. And I remember like if I laid down, my ribs will pop out and like all this was flat. So it looked looked like I, I don't know, it looked weird, you know, it didn't look right. And and like people would make fun of me, like, yo, you're weird, because you know, some people would lay down and it's all flat, you know. But when I lay down, it's like you see my ribs cut, my ribs would be popping out and then everything's be flat. So it looked I don't know. Just I, I look like weird as hell. But then when I went to the gym, I remember getting a trainer uh, because back in the days it was like twenty four hour fitness was doing this like summer special where they they give you a trainer. It was super cheap, and they train you for the summer like one twice a week uh, for twelve weeks or something like that. And the trainer was like, I I told him he's like, what's some parts you want to work on? That's like my chest, and he's like. Like, what's wrong with chat? He's like, I'm a, I'm a bird chest. And I told him the same thing. Like, I'll lay down. Like, I lift up my shirt. I was like, see, like, my ribs are out. And he's like, he's like, that's a good thing. And I was like, what do you mean? I look like a freak. You know? <laughs> he's like, and he's like, he's like, because he's like, you got a big frame. He's like, that's what it is. So that means that you'll, you'll be able to put on some massive muscle. It's just that you're growing right now. So, like, everything's going to look weird when you're growing you know like so like so he's like everything's just like growing right now he's like and what's this this is a sign that your body just you have like a big torso like you have a big frame so when you have a big frame like that you can put on some a lot of muscle and he's like we just need to start working on that chest to to get it bigger so um remember first exercise was just like some hanging dips like assisted hanging dips and I got this burning sensation. Like it felt like someone took a knife and just like jabbed into my chest and went like that. And I was like, ah! And he's like, he, he's like, what's wrong? I'm like, it, it, I feel like someone's like ripping it. He's like, that's the muscles growing, you know? <laughs> so I was like, oh, it's okay, you know, I can't be a bitch, you know? So I was like, kept going. And, and then I guess like, because so, I was so uh, insecure about it. It was one of the things I focused on the most. I obviously I hit other body parts, but like I probably fo I hyper focus on my chest more. And also, I like the Rock. I grew up watching wrestling. I always wanted to do like, you know, that with the chest because I was like, yo, how did we could Rock Rock was wrestling? W I used to watch uh, WWF all the time, and um, the Rock would come out. And he'd be like, bah, bah, you know, pop pop his chest muscles. I'm like, man, how you do that? You know, Hulk Hogan would do that. He'd be like, pop, pop, pop. I was like, what? And I was like, and I'm like, how you do that? I'm like, I don't even know how you do that. And so, so, and I remember telling the trainer about it. And he's like, oh, once you, it, you could do it. It's just, you have to, it has to get bigger. Yeah. So he's like, you just have to keep working. So I think those two things, like the insecurity, plus also the wrestling stuff, like, <laughs> like I was just like, I have to do the chitty pop, the titty pop, the chest pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And, and then um, eventually it just started growing, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Love that. <laughs> the, 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 se the second <laughs> question I had, this also a hilarious one, um, is that your leg muscles are bigger than my future. Um, <laughs> um, what, what exercise should I be doing to grow them the size of yours? 
Well, that's a good question because like I, I personally feel my legs are my weakest. You know, that's it, to be very honest with you because um, me, I just finished doing uh, like the bodybuilding last year, and that's what the judges told me. They're like, "You put on your legs." You know, I was like. Yeah, so it's like, so, but, you know, I'm glad that they said that. It really helps with my ego, you know, but, but with that said, um, I mean, I, I just do like, um, I do, a, there's a lot of combinations that I do with legs. Um, when I'm cutting, I do more high volume. So, um, and some of the stuff that I've done to help seeing leg growth is, you know, you got your squats, you got your deadlifts. Uh, but then when it comes to like the machine machines, like leg presses and stuff, um, there's a combination of high repetition and then also heavy. So, uh, for example, I, I, there's this one exercise that I, I did for a while that really helped with leg growth. And it's called the three variation leg press. So it's like you do 30 reps with your feet in a neutral position, then 30 reps with your feet spread out, angled out like that. Um, rotate it outwards and then uh, 30 reps with your feet together or with your toes inward like that touching with with your uh, feet rotated inwards and uh, and you do 30 reps so it's like 90 reps no breaks like 90 reps for like three or four sets you know uh, there was times I did five sets and I would spend like literally 30, 40 minutes on the leg press doing that shit because it's, it's so, it's gruesome, right? But um, I would do stuff like that. And then, um, or, or just, uh, and then triple drop sets on leg extensions or leg curls or just high repetitions or heavy. And I would like combine them. I would, I would like change up the variations so much. So like, um, you know, maybe one day I would do that leg press, that crazy leg press routine. And then the following week I would do just heavy leg press. And then the, the, the week after maybe, maybe a drop set, you know, and, and I would do that with every single workout where one workout might be heavy. Another second workout would be high repetition. Another workout would be a drop sets, you know, so it's just a combination of uh, different things. And then also you have periodization training. I've been trained for a long time. So it's always about just changing things up, just adding volume, adding weight. Um, so there's some I've done periodizations where I spend 12 weeks just lifting heavy or another 12 weeks with just high volume. Like all the workouts are high volume. Uh, it's just all different combinations of to stimulate the muscle the best way, you know. So that's what I've done. It's it's never one thing, but it's all the exercises I could tell you is probably the same exercises you you probably already know. Yeah, uh, it's just like it's just how you're doing it. How, like like I said, if it's leg extensions, drop sets, triple drop sets, pyramid sets, burnouts. You know, um, same what exercise. Just different types of volumes, different types of set routines. You know what I mean? Leg leg extensions, Smith machine squats, assisted squats, uh, Bulgarian squats. You know, lunges. Like I've done them all. Yeah, you know, it's just I've no one thing. You know what I mean, it's one of those things where I am now. I think in the last year, I've actually started actually enjoying leg day slightly. I used to hate it, and then I did get a uh, a trainer for a bit. And um, mm -hmm. I've started to enjoy it over time because I felt it was one of those exercises that I used to, I, I think with a lot of people, they go into the gym and be like, I don't really fancy doing this today and just kind of skip it. And uh, now I'm very much um, enjoying it at the best of times. Yeah, I mean, for me, for me, it's like a love-hate thing, you know? It's like I hate doing it, but I, I, I like the results that I get out of it. You know, so that's what encouraged me to do it. And I actually get mad if I can't do it because like the legs, the legs make you look proportion and makes you feel strong. Like, you know, like when you wear some nice pants or something, like you look good in the pants, you know, like, like, like it's not like the skin or if I'm wearing some nice shorts, I'll, I don't have to wear some shorts covering my knees. I can wear the shorts mid thigh. Yeah. You know? And people will be like, man, you know, this guy got some legs on him, you know? Uh, or I, sometimes I wear the changas, right? Like the Brazilian oh, yeah. speedos. 
Like, you can only rock those if you got some good legs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm in Miami. So I'm like, like I'm like, I'll be rocking those sometimes. And, and like, I'm like, you, you, you can only rock them if you got some good legs. You know what I'm saying? And, and and you're just walking on the beach, you stand there, you're flexing, and you just see them, people are like, damn, you know. Uh, but but that's the thing, it's like the legs, the legs are tough, you know, they are tough to grow, especially when you have especially if they're long, you got some long limbs, like they're really too hard to grow. It's and that's why I say it's like one of my weaknesses is that. And I really try like this year is one that's my goal. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna try to get them big, you know. So uh, right now I'm focusing on more heavier lifts because I, I've been I've been kind of away from that for a while. And it kind of was dieting for all year. I was last year I was dieting. So it was just mostly just high repetitions. But this year I'm like, now nah, I'm going to go pretty heavy. Like I want to try to really bring them up with some heavy lifts because I haven't done them in a while. So I want I want to periodize like do like maybe I, I think I, I told myself about maybe like six months. Um, just a lift and heavy, um, really focus on that and just try to see like what type of results can I get just going balls to the wall, lifting heavy on legs. Yeah. And then, then start going back into like, then kind of go into like a little hybrid where it's like, there's some heavy lifts with some like high, high volume because the, with the heavy lifts, that's the only way you can build up your strength levels. And if you want to do more high volume, uh, I want to do a high volume with heavier weights. You know what I'm saying? So like, and that's how it kind of, that's how they kind of play hand to hand is like, you have to do some strength training. You have to do like some heavy lifts because if you want the strength to go up so you can do high reps with heavier weights, you have to bring up your strength first, mm. you know? So it's all, it's all like a balancing act when it comes Absolutely. to those things. So I am going to wrap this up in a second, but before we do, I do have a quick fire round um, just to kind of see your favorites of these. So, your favorite protein? Favorite protein. So uh, I guess, well, it's seitan, right now okay. Satan from Upton's. Yeah, Upton's Satan. Your favorite, favorite exercise? Favorite exercise. Mm, I guess, I guess the cable crossovers. I guess that's <laughs> worst <Yeah>. exercise. <laughs> Cable crossovers, you know, cable flies, you know, I guess. Like, I don't know. I really don't have one. But you know what? Probably, probably, probably the spin bike. I actually like, I actually enjoy that the most, like spinning. I, you know, I, I really enjoy that. Even though I, I don't, like I'm bulking right now, so I try not to do so much. But um, I, I do enjoy, like, riding the bike, like doing the spin bike. I love that. Um, the worst exercise and the most underrated exercise. That three variation <laughs> leg press. That, I think that thing's like that workout is just a killer, man. It's it's like when I first my coach was the one who created that workout. I don't know where he got it from. I think he got it from the abyss of hell, you know. Because I was just like when he introduced me to that workout, I was like, how many reps you want me to do? <laughs> like like <laughs> ninety? I was like, what? what <laughs> this is insane bro like i was like you're just making shit up at this point he's like no do it <laughs> and i'm like 30 40 minutes on one machine you know your legs are toast after that uh but that that's definitely the worst the what was the other one um bulgarian sp uh, squats that's underrated like they're tough but like it's, it's, it's i know it's something that a lot of people don't like they avoid doing that. Yeah, I do them because it, it really works. Like that, that's literally the best workout for legs. It's just so, because it's those unilateral leg exercises. So you're just, all that tension is getting activated into that quad, you know? Mm, absolutely. There's, um, I've actually created a meal tonight because I was reading the plant-based athlete the other night and obviously you have two recipes in there. So tonight I do have the vegan taco bowl that you uh, stuck in there. So I'll let you know. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good one. And, and truthfully you can, um, that taco bowl, you can transfer it into a, like an egg bowl roll, same ingredients, just use, uh, just egg. And um, 
and so teriyaki it's, it's called soyaki sauce and and it's like an egg roll it's almost so if you use just egg and then uh you know just make a little omelet and then crush that in there with the seitan and and the because i think the taco bowl has does the taco bowl has used coleslaw or uh, lettuce, lettuce i think okay yeah you have to switch it out with coleslaw and switch out the lettuce with coleslaw and uh don't use tomatoes and then use the same seitan just egg and soyaki sauce you have an egg roll bowl and that's fire like it's like it's it's like an egg roll <laughs> but like a bowl and it's like you're gonna be like man this is fire you know it's I really good to try that i can't wait i'm looking forward to it i'll have to let you know how it goes <laughs> <laughs> yeah no doubt thank man. you so much um where can we find you uh you can find me on all social media platforms just type in my name corinne sutton or you could go to my website at bodyhdfitness.com or uh, email me at Corinne Sutton at bodyhdfitness.com. Perfect.